Wildfires are definitely increasing in severity and intensity. The wildfires are a part of the forest out west and really part of the ecosystem. There's no way to completely exclude fires from it. And one of the things that has occurred over the last hundred or so years of fire suppression is the more that we suppress fires, the more intense the fires are becoming. Fire season is a year-round thing, and a lot of that is because of climate change has extended the fire season, and really we can have hot and dry conditions any time of year in Colorado. Homeowners in the American West face the threat of wildfires. I'm Kyle McCaddy with Wildfire Partners, and I help homeowners make their homes more wildfire resilient. I've been a firefighter for 10 years in the Front Range of Colorado and spent lots of time on the fire lines across the West. My experience as a wildland firefighter helps me understand how wildfire can impact a community and how best to mitigate wildfires. Because fire is a natural part of the forest, we really have to adapt ourselves and our environments and also the way we look at the forest to really be able to have resilient communities in areas that, that are prone to wildfires. The ecosystem as a whole has really adapted to wildfire. There's wildfire resistant pines and firs, and there's also pine trees. Their, their cones will not open until there's enough heat, like the heat of a high intensity crown fire. And then the, the seeds will drop after a wildfire has come through. Aspens are the same way. They really thrive on disturbance and they're often the first tree species that comes back. There's a lot more development in the forested and the fire prone areas, particularly out west. 60% of the new homes that are expected to be built are expected to be built in areas that are prone to wildfires. It's really up to the homeowners themselves. They can really make a difference as to whether their house survives or not. I think the biggest misconception that people have is that there's not much that they can do to keep their homes from igniting in a wildfire. And that's not what the research says. Hello. Hello. How you doing? I'm Kyle. Mandy, nice to meet you. Yeah, good to meet you as well. Research has shown that the homes ignite in wildfires because of the condition of the home and the vegetation within 100 feet of the home. So the first thing I see here is just the, the mulch within uh, what we call zone 1A, or the first uh, five feet or so around your house. The principal space is the area around homes that we try to reduce the intensity of the heat as it approaches the home. My home is in an area prone to wildfires, and uh, there was one um, just a couple of years ago, just down the road. So very concerned about that, about the safety of our home, and everyone in it. So another thing that we look at is any type of openings in the house that large embers can oh, kind of get okay. in there. The big thing is mitigating from embers. About half the homes that burn in wildfires burn because of just the embers raining down up ahead of the fire a mile or two in advance. The junipers are really, really flammable. If you can kind of visualize the junipers as a can of gasoline right Great. here. It's, it's, it's that, that volatile, that kind of that, that explosive. One of everybody's greatest fears is fire, especially with animals in the house and, and everything that you love in a house. So um, it is a, a very terrifying thought, but when you start to break it down and learn what things contribute to a fire and which things may even protect, it does make you feel more secure and knowing that you can have an effect. The mitigation process is unique for each home and property. Oftentimes, the mitigation process isn't as bad as people anticipate from the beginning. And oftentimes, people feel really good that they have an idea of, of the things that they can do to mitigate their home. Another benefit that homeowners have discussed is improved views. When working through defensible space with homeowners, I like to work with them as much as possible to be able to identify which trees that the homeowners really have an attachment to and kind of work from there. I'm using my forestry background and experience to try to see what the forest is telling me. We follow up with the homeowner just to make sure that everything is how we had hoped and make any corrections that need to be made really for the safety of the home. 
Hi, hey, Kyle. How's it going? Good. How are you? Doing good. Good. How nice are you doing? Nice to see you again. Why don't you walk me around and kind of point out some of the okay. trees? We removed, trimmed back, and thinned. Uh, there was a good many shrubs. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you can see, they are coming back again. Yeah. And this being our favorite tree, gets to stay within our zone one, right? Right, and right. And then we just move zone one out farther. Exactly. Yeah. Wildfires have occurred in the past year. Uh, the biggest source that everybody thinks about is the railroad track. And it has a history of having been the spark that uh, has burned uh, cause fires in the neighborhood. It's a topic of conversation at most of our community gatherings. Wildfires can definitely be, be terrifying. It's personally important for me to help individuals figure out ways that they can protect their homes, their lives, their pets, their communities from wildfires. Almost all the time, homeowners really like the way that their forest looks after mitigation. Oftentimes there's more light, there's more grasses and flowers and shrubs and things like that. Yeah, aesthetics haven't changed. Actually, we see our mountain better because the tall trees that blocked our view are gone. <laughs> and we've had uh, elk, deer, we've had bobcats run right through here. Uh, they don't seem to object, so uh, they're happy we're happy. <laughs> Thanks, yeah. Kyle, very yeah, much for thank your help. You. We appreciate yep. it. Yeah, definitely. Appreciate your help. Science has shown that there is ways to live safely with forest fires. It starts with the homeowners themselves mitigating their, their homes and the area around their homes. When communities get together and mitigate everybody's homes and the areas in between homes, it only increases the chance of not only homes surviving, but also communities surviving as well. It's really important for me to empower homeowners 